The NFL is a quarterback-driven league. Fans are drawn like a moth to a flame when games have back-and-forth finishes punctuated with tons of points, yards, and downfield passing attacks. But one day, we got such a disastrously boring outing from the game's quarterbacks that watching paint dry on a wall while in line at the DMV would have been exponentially more stimulating. This is the NFL's worst quarterbacked game. MetLife Stadium, tropical East Rutherford, New Jersey, December 2nd, the year of our Lord, 20.12 centuries after something happened. The 4-7 Cardinals visit the 4-7 Jets. The cards are led by Ryan Lindley, a rookie sixth round pick appearing in his third career game. His first ever start was just a week prior in which he threw no touchdowns, but in his defense, he did throw four picks and enters this game dead last in passer rating. The Jets are captained by Mark Sanchez, a man 10 days removed from running into his right guard's ass, so this is probably the first time he's shown his face in public since. He's also now fully exposed as a fraud after some early career misconceptions when the Jets' defense made the AFC title game in each of his first two seasons and is just mediocre enough to maintain a tenuous hold on his job. So we brace ourselves and enter this game with aerial expectations lower than Tom Haverford's credit score. Surely it can't possibly under-deliver, right? We even get a nice start too, with Lindley connecting with Larry Fitzgerald for 23 yards on the game's first pass. They'd soon punt, meaning now we get to punish our eyes with some Sanchez action. On New York's very first offensive snap, Sanchez drops back, gets some pressure in his face, and decides to throw a lame duck off his back foot that finds its way into the waiting arms of his former teammate, Kerry Rhodes. Two Jets possessions later, Sanchez killed their drive with this brilliant pass that was nearly intercepted by Quinton Groves before actually being intercepted, once again, by Rhodes. It takes something special to sling a pass in the direct path of a linebacker, luck out when he doesn't snag it, but still get picked because it's also in the direct path of the safety 10 yards behind him. After his next pass rainbowed down into the arms of Pat Peterson, the Sanchez had thrown just nine balls, and three were caught by Cardinals. Fortunately, Sanchez's counterpart is the true lord of quarterback incompetence, and after trying his best to give the ball back on his next pass, Lindley successfully gets the job done on the one after that, lofting a pass deep downfield to Mike Floyd, who is about as open as a bar in Utah at midnight. As bad as it's been so far, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We'd reached the two minute warning of the first half with Zona still looking to move the chains for the first time since the opening minute of the game. Desperate for a spark that their QB was clearly incapable of providing, this Rashad Johnson fake punt picked up 40 yards, setting up a Jay Feely field goal and a thrilling three nothing ball game at the break. But what's a key ingredient to any poorly quarterbacked game? A benching. And after Sanchez went one for five for two yards across the Jets' first three drives of the second half, it was time for Sexy Rexy to make a change and yank the man whose jersey his wife is wearing on a bicep tat. Ordinarily, this would be time to move their personal punt protector to QB, but one Timothy Richard Tebow is sidelined with broken ribs and thus relegated to praying for the Jets. So instead, Rex scrapes the bottom of the barrel to find Greg McElroy aka the quarterback who beat Tebow in the 09 SEC Championship game, and McElroy immediately leads a lengthy 69-yard touchdown drive. Credit McElroy if you want, but Bilal Powell and defensive penalties accounted for over 80% of that series' yardage. Meanwhile, Lindley's led his team to nothing but three and outs on each of their first four drives of the second half, and in fact, this 16-yard completion to Floyd in the fourth quarter is the first time Lindley's right arm eked out a first down since that initial pass of the game, and after a field goal, they trailed by just one. They'd get another chance, but after sending a ball flying in some zip code other than where his wideout was, that would be all she wrote. McElroy tried to give the birds one last chance by chucking up this flaming pile of garbage, but a cardinal penalty negated it and they'd never see the ball again. Lindley wound up throwing for just 72 yards on 31 attempts in what was one of the lamest passing outputs since the AFL-NFL merger back in 1970. 
After his first pass of the game was completed to Fitzgerald, he threw another 21 passes to his wide receivers, completing just four of them for 35 yards. And remember, he came into this game as the lowest rated passer in the league. What did that leaderboard now look like after? Shield your children's eyes, folks, it's that ugly. The gap between him and the runner-up is stunning. With Sanchez playing recklessly enough that the Jets were forced to turn to sub-Tebow levels of the depth chart, the amalgam of these two teams' quarterback play left any viewers remaining hoping that the weirdos who thought the world's demise would come later that month were spot on. Now, to be fair, there were other remarkable stinkers from an era of explosive passing attacks. Like a 2005 game at Soldier Field that saw the 49ers complete but a single pass under the stewardship of Cody Pickett, with Kyle Orton, uh, not a whole hell of a lot better. Or a game there the next year, in which starting QBs Brad Johnson and Rex Grossman each failed to complete half their passes, with the defenses hauling in seven of them. The Bears took that show on the road on a lovely 2010 day in Charlotte featuring two squads that couldn't even combine to cover a football field and a half through the air. Jimmy Clausen was so bad, the tanking Panthers benched him for Matt Moore, who promptly threw picks to cap both of his drives, enabling Todd Collins to be the only QB that season to have tossed four INTs in a win. Gross. And in 2011 in Oakland, Kyle Bowler combined with arguably two of the greatest pro quarterbacks from USC to produce a stench so repulsive it surpassed that of the literal shit-filled stadium that housed the game. But that first Soldier Field game had historically strong 50 mile an hour wind gusts and the second one was freezing with single digit temperatures. The terrible USC quarterbacks at least were able to move their teams and get some first downs once in a while. And that collins Clausen disaster gets a bit of a pass as the lone game Jay Cutler missed in an otherwise very strong season. Slice it any way you want, Ryan Lindley squaring off against Mark Sanchez had everything any masochist would hope to get from a football game. For everyone else, the only light at the end of the tunnel was to hope the Mayans were right. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching this episode of The Worst. In case you're wondering what Ryan Lindley's up to nowadays, he's actually the quarterback's coach of the Browns. So Godspeed to Baker Mayfield. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe because every time you do, an angel gets its wings.